Hey guys, you're watching the Yakla channel, me Robbo, and uh, topic for today is place. I'm going to, uh, in this video, what you can expect is I'm going to show you some of the rigs I use when I go out fishing, and then we're going to jump out into the water, and I'm going to show you how I bait up and um, how I drift fish for place. So yeah, so moving on then, just I'm going to show you two of the rigs that I'm going to be using in this video. Uh, I make these rigs up myself, I don't buy them off the shelf. Um, However, some of the parts you can buy. So for instance, I'm using a boom rig here, which will drag along the floor. You can buy these booms um, in most tackle shops already made. And it's simply just a, uh, a bit of wire with some beads threaded on and a uh, swivel on each end. But yeah, so those, that's the boom ready made. And then you've got your, your sinker sort of free running at the bottom. And then on, on each end, I've attached um, a bit of line, which is about 20, 20 centimeters long. And I simply just have a, a little stopper, which is a little uh, tiny cutoff of um, rubber tubing with a line going through and then back around through again. And that forms that little stopper, which you can move up and down the line. Then I've got a little bead and uh, a little shiny spoon that'll flick in the water like so. And as you can see, the line's just uh, fed straight through the spoon itself. And then the same again on the other side. And then further down, I've just added a few orange and um, green beads, uh, sort of an imitation of uh, the same markings on the back of a place. So when the fish sees this bumping along the bottom in the sand, it, it thinks it's another place feeding and it goes to investigate. Well, that's the theory anyway. And then lastly, just a hook on the end, like so. Uh, smaller the better, you can use one O's or um, you could even go smaller than that. But yeah, so that is my little boom rig that I'm gonna be using, one of. Another um, another rig I use, which is uh, simply a a uh, bit of feathers with the feathers actually cut off, so you've just left with the little hook ends like so. Down to a uh, little clip with a sinker, and then off the sinker itself, I've got a bit of main line. I'll show you now quickly. Just clipped onto the sinker clip, off with some more sort of beads and a spoon, and a uh, and a little hook. So that'll bump along the bottom, and these uh, these two little hooks here will sort of be just above the surface, going along, floating above the ground when you're dragging it along. But anyway, yeah. So th those are my two little rigs I'm going to be using. Uh, we're going to jump out in the water now. I'm going to show you sort of how I bait up and how I drift fish. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. Enjoy. Guys, I'm off uh, Shoreham today. It's uh, April 2018. April's normally uh, a good time of year to catch place, so that's what I'm targeting today. 
and uh, the rig I'm going to be using, I've just got uh, three little uh, hooks coming off, like so, fairly small, size of my fingertip. And then I've got a uh, little tiny sinker with another leader coming off, some shiny little beads and a spoon, and a, a bigger hook. And on these little hooks here, I'll be baiting a little tiny rag. On this one here, I'll have a big rag or even little strips of uh, mackerel or some sort of uh, fish. Uh, you can even put uh, long, long, thin strips of squid. But yeah, that's my rig, and that's just going to bump along the bottom. This is going to drag along the floor, and then these here are going to sort of like, you know, just just above the just above the surface of the ground. The worms are going to be going along as I'm bumping this along the floor, drifting. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this attracts a place. And uh, yeah, the the bait I'm going to be using, like I said, is rag, and. Um, Got some, uh, got some mackerel as well, which I can cut up into strips, because I believe you can even get turbot out here, so you never know. Um, the only thing I, um, I've never fished here before, it's my first time fishing here. Apparently there's a reef here, so I really don't want to drift into the reef. Unfortunately, I don't have a fish finder with me, but um, if I get snagged up, I'll just paddle backwards and unhook myself, hopefully. But yeah, let, let's, get the, uh, let's get the worms on, and uh, hopefully I can uh, catch some place. Enjoy. So that's me all baited up then. Just little tiny worms and small hooks. So, and a bigger one on there. Just drag that along. I always, uh, when I'm drifting, I always just keep my paddle on my lap. So if I get stuck, I can just put the rod down and quickly sort of paddle against the tide and uh, unhook it. Normally using very light tackle, as you can see, I'm using a little spinning rod. If you get hooked onto uh, rocks or weed, it's quite a big kayak, you know, it has quite a big pull. So, uh, you know, before you know it, especially if you've got strong braid, you could just snap your rod. Let's see what we can get. And then all I'm doing is just trying to give as much movement to the uh, to the worms as possible. So as you can see there, I'm just sort of every now and then just sort of bumping this sinker along the bottom like so. Just like that. Alternatively, you can just leave it and drag it along the floor. Um, it's up to you. But yeah. That effectively is drift fishing for place. So hopefully I can uh, I can uh, show you a fish soon. But another thing you can do is you can put your rod holders out and you can have two rods out at the same time. A lot of people use something called a drogue, uh, which is basically effectively a parachute you attach to your anchor line and it slows down your drift, especially in strong tides. Um, I don't have one with me today, however. You can make your own, you don't have to buy them, but there are people out there that sell them, so it's worth, uh, it's worth looking at, especially when there's really strong tides, it'll slow you down massively. Yeah. Cool. Back to the... First flat the other day on the drift. There you go. First place of the day. Sorry, my little kid. But yeah, just to prove the method does work. There you have it. Right then, another bait I use for place is uh, the underbelly of a uh, mackerel. So this little white part here, 
It's a lot firmer skin than the rest of the mackerel itself, which normally just falls apart when it's defrosted. So what I normally do is I just snip at the bottom here. So and then I just go along the bottom all the way to the front. Same again on the other side. And I snip the front there. And I just go underneath. left with this little white part here and then I just cut that up into two strips straight down the middle like so and you get little white strips like this that's good for things like um, turbot or lace as well any flatfish really drags along the bottom like so and it's an attractor I've got some worm on here anyway, but you don't really need the worm on there. Um, I'm just going to leave it on anyway. And then all you do is you just nick the hook to the end, like so. And there you have it. And that'll drag along the bottom. See if we can get a turbot. Hey, hey, hey! Another one? Hey, hey, hey. Another one? A nice lovely place. Just to prove to you the rig does work. And there you have it. Let's get him unhooked. Lovely little place. Lovely little place. Right then, day two, back in Shoreham. Um, it's had such a good day yesterday, and I'm on leave. I thought I'll uh, I'll give it another go today. Uh, the rig that seemed uh, most successful yesterday was uh, this one here, which is basically just two little hooks coming off, um, so like a two-hook flapper with short little uh, tiny hooks, and then uh, down to the sinker, and just simply another line coming off of that um, to with some beads and a little spoon and then a little one, one -oh hook that sort of bumps along the bottom that bait and these two sort of like just, just above the surface go along um, so yeah that seemed to work yesterday uh, a little small sinker There's a bit, um, the wind's a bit stronger today uh, at least the water's clear the, uh, the dredge is still here although he's, he's just dumps, uh, dumped his load but he's gone further out to sea and uh, hopefully by the looks of it it looks like he's heading back to France because it's, uh, it's a French trawler it's a French dredger so yeah He's heading that way, so hopefully that means he's, he's out. But yeah, I'm going to get my lines in the water now and hopefully the place is still here. Oh then, that's my worm that's going to bump along the bottom, as you can see there. And, uh, I'll just give you a quick show. 
So it's quite misty today, but it's not raining. Um, as you can see, uh, low cloud, but um, the water's really clear. So uh, that, that's a bonus. You know, it's easier for fishing. And uh, there seems to be a lot of birds about. As you can see in the distance there, a lot of birds about. And I'm now drifting towards the um, shore and harbour entrance. So I paddled out until I was sort of in line with the... Um, uh, what is that? You see, I think it's like a factory or something um, inside that um, actual uh, harbour itself. So I paddled out until I'm in line with that. And then I'm just going to drift towards uh, the harbour entrance. There's no sort of tide today. It's just the wind sort of pushing me along. So that's sort of the wind direction. So, um, yeah, let's get the line in the water and hopefully get a fish. Then just to show you what the rig looks like underwater. Well, so obviously that's going to bump along the bottom. I just wanted to show you though how it uh, sort of lays out once it's in the water itself. Drop it down now and take a bump it along the sand. Hopefully, it's sand down there. Alright, that's on the floor now. So, that's my line on the floor. And all I can do is just, um, I can either leave it to drag like that. Slightly lift the sinker up and bump along the floor like that. That gives it uh, sort of extra movement. Or you can just drag it. You'll notice because um, I'm using a light rod, the tip sort of like shudders or, or sh shakes. You know, almost like you're getting little bites. Uh, that's just the sink obviously moving through the sand. Um, when you are drifting there, especially if you're using light tackle, always make sure you got your paddle to hand, like I do here. So uh, you can just put your rod right on your lap and uh, sort of paddle in the direction of the, the tide because you know if you get hooked up you don't want to snap your, your rod or your line. You can put your drag on I suppose but uh, I, just, I just like to uh, have the paddle to hand so I can quickly go and unhook myself if I get snagged up. But yeah it's just simply a case of this and uh, you'll know you'll know when you've uh, hooked into one um, because your line will go tighter and it'll seem like you're snagged but it's just basically a dead weight. And then, um, you can even see the bite sometimes, it's, you know, you can actually see the rod tip going nuts, so, yeah. Uh, hopefully I can show you that in a minute. So that's my first uh, place of the day. It's been uh, it's been tough today. Not like yesterday, where it was every hit. But as you can see, it's pretty decent size on the drift as well. Not bad.
Right guys, so that's another episode on the uh, Yakla channel. I uh, hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed watching. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please like and please subscribe. Um, yeah, until next time, tie lines and uh, happy fishing. And hopefully I'll see you on the water.